bed rotting? Have you heard of bed rotting? It's a new TikTok trend, and this is cutting edge stuff. It's called bed rotting. New TikTok trend deemed as bed rotting. <laughs> Finally, a TikTok trend that chronic fatigue people like us can not only actually participate in for once, but excel at. So bed rotting is when people decide to stay in bed all day doing immobile activities that include sleeping, watching TV, or being on the phone. Okay, now this is quite an aggressive way to describe chilling out. <laughs> It's something that I learned about last week, but it's something I've been doing for years off and on. And I didn't know it had a name for it. I just thought it was like just depression. And I'm sure you've been doing this too. It's a form of self-care. Bed routing is just spending all day in bed. Similarly, if you're only staying in bed for a few hours, but not the entire day, this is called carcass time. Aren't those just beautiful names for what we are forced to do with our lives? Hmm. You know, I feel like the marketing team just f this one a bit with the whole rotting thing. But anyways. You're a Gen Zer. You're our official Gen Zer from the audience. Do you know what bed rotting is and do you do it? So all the news sources seem to be blaming Gen Z for this trend. Stupid younger generation. But it's weird that they're blaming them for that, considering staying in bed all day, either because of chronic illness or depression or what have you, has been around basically forever. Kind of an odd thing to blame Gen Z for. I mean, it's basically just a self-care day or a mental health day. Rotting away in bed seems to be one of Gen Z's preferred methods of self-care. I mean, I do kind of see why the news is putting it on Gen Z. The difference between their generation and the rest of ours is their generation actually takes care of their own health first, before work, before anything else, because they're more self-focused. Whereas people like us, if you're an old fuddy-duddy like me or a Gen Xer or a boomer, we were trained to put our health last. You gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta do what you gotta do. And that's what led most of us to the state we're in now. Stop eating me! I'm not dead yet! Not to mention giving this normal, common thing a ridiculous name and putting it all over TikTok and doing it even if you don't actually need to. That's Gen Z. <laughs> I'm a big fan of rest, guys. I'm a massive fan of rest. And now you're telling me I can rest and be trendy at the same time? What a f world to live in, dude. I'm loving this one. But the actual trend of bed rotting didn't actually start with our Generation Z. It started with China's Generation Z. So the interesting thing is this actually kind of came from a big movement in 2021 where the Chinese youth decided to do something called lying flat. And what lying flat meant to them was essentially just doing the bare minimum to get by and survive kind of the quiet quitting of life. To them, it refers to an attitude of giving up on a situation that is deteriorating. So they did it more as a social protest than as a health thing. And it did eventually turn into the bed rotting we know today. Remember to rebel against authority, kids! Give this a like and a subscribe, maybe, if you aren't already. Now, experts say it's okay to have a lazy day, but people should incorporate other activities, too. They warn that being inactive for a long time could be a more serious mental health concern, and people should talk to a doctor if it happens often. I mean, if you think about it, there are a lot of pros with bed rotting. I mean, it really helps you learn to be guilt-free when rejecting the work and hustle culture that we're trained to do. It also helps you actually learn to listen to your body, to know when you need to rest, so you actually do. And it is a mental health day. It mentally helps you recuperate from the stress. Normally in the past, if I stayed in bed all day, I would feel so guilty. But now that I've learned that this is a thing, <laughs> I'm no longer going to feel guilty for bed rotting. We have been conditioned to be productive members of society for so long. Sometimes you just want to lay in bed and do nothing. There are also cons to doing bed rotting. Con! <laughs> Con! 
Uh, while it can be helpful for your health, it can also be detrimental. You can easily throw off your sleep schedule. So if you're going to do this, don't do it actually in bed if you can. Try and do it from like a couch or a lazy boy or something. That's what she said. Because you want to train your body that bed equals sleep. Otherwise, you end up with insomnia, like I've been dealing with. <sighs> Who is interrupting my insomnia? I've heard about this trend called bed rotting, and I want to make this very clear. Like, sit up in your bed, or, you know, turn on TV in your room, whatever. But it probably would be better if maybe you went into, like, the living room. I mean, you can still wear your jammies. It's your house, man. You can do what you want. But, you know, at least get out of bed. Maybe go to the bathroom and then debate whether or not to go on the couch or go back to your bed. And I know it's okay to do it every once in a while, but this is starting to become a trend where people are counting days of how long they can do this bed rotting thing. And that is actually something that they've been working with me on quite a bit to try and solve my insomnia, is if you ever can't sleep, if you ever are not sleeping, do not lay in bed. Go lay on the couch, go do something else for a while, because you want to train your body that bed means sleep only. The other problem is, Eating in bed makes you learn that bed means food. Lasagna in bed? This is especially bad for those of us with eating disorders. We don't need anything else making us hungry or wanting to binge. Especially not when we're in bed and sedentary. And being hungry also makes sleeping difficult. Hence more insomnia. Honey, if you're going through something, it's okay. Take your time. But at the same time, don't be eating and doing everything in your bed, that's meant for you to sleep in. And I know that sounds weird, but there's actually a whole psychology and study into that. That's why I don't eat on my bed. Because it's when you start eating on your bed, your body's going to get used to, oh, this is my bed, it's time for me to eat. That's an association thing. It is a psychological thing. And you're gonna like want to eat every time you lay down from then on or you're not gonna be able to fall asleep faster You're not gonna be able to get as much rest as you need because your body thinks you should be doing something else while in bed And the third con and probably the biggest one Calling it bed rotting or carcass time is kind of a slap in the face to those of us that actually kind of are rotting in our beds due to our chronic illness conditions Talk about naming it the most negative take possible. And really, that makes it even more depressing for those of us that do not have a choice in participating. And I'm not the only one that thinks so. I am just infuriated by this framing language of bed rotting. So I would like for the Spoonies to chime in if you're comfortable putting, you know, what your debilitating diagnoses are and then um, saying how much time you are forced to spend in bed because of those conditions. There's a new trend called bed rotting and it's actually perfect. Bed rotting. First and foremost, how rude. This is not a f trend. This is a lifestyle, all right? You have to be committed to this. Anyhow, ew, ew, ew. How is this a trend? Okay. My depression isn't something you squares can partake in from time to time, okay? You squares. I was laying exactly like this when I watched the video. Anyhow, this, this, all of this, the trend, me looking into the camera as I'm seeing my depression become somehow a trend, whether this is satire or not, even the, I don't know, all of it, ew, 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 whether it's Satan, Jesus, or aliens, something and the human race. I'm done. Okay? I'm ready. Take us, please. I don't want to live on this planet anymore. I love her, 100%. She's got it right. Ew, ew, ew. Ew. Like, we don't get a choice in this. This isn't fun for us. This isn't a trend. This is, like, the sad part of our existence. Although, if it ever becomes an Olympic sport, we will win. That's when our natural advantage comes into play. If you thought this was interesting and you want to hear some more chronic illness lingo that you might not have heard before, why don't you try one of these videos? I'm sure you'll find them interesting. And together, we will keep on surviving, my friends.